everyone. Welcome back to Zoo School. I'm here with Brian at the Cheetah Habitat, and we're going to be slingshotting the cheetah's diet into their habitat. Probably thinking, why the heck are they using a slingshot? Well, the reason is cheetahs are very good visual hunters. Um, so good enrichment for them has to do with um, their vision. So by throwing the meat in with a slingshot, it's kind of very fast paced. Um, very visual, so we'll see if it, this will entice them a little bit. Because enrichment is really important for these guys, um, just like every animal in the zoo. But these guys especially because these guys are the fastest land mammals. So when they're catching their prey, they're usually going speeds of, of up to 60 or 70 miles per hour, which is pretty crazy. We definitely have to make sure that we're using enrichment that stimulates them um, and brings out their natural behaviors. We may not be getting them up to those top speeds, um, but we are um, engaging with their visual adaptations. Um, now their adaptations for running at those top speeds are pretty amazing. From the tip of their nose to the tip of their tail, um, they're all decked out to run at those top speeds and to sustain those top speeds. So we'll start with their head and their nose. So their head is actually designed perfectly um, to give them bigger nasal passageways, um, which allows for more intake um, of oxygen when they are um, achieving those top speeds. Um, and that oxygen feeds right into their really large lungs. Now, with their head, because of those larger nasal passageways, um, their teeth are actually a little bit smaller. Um, so because of that, these guys will often steer away from fights with larger predators like lions who do have those big canines. Um, so also having to do with their body to help them running um, are their claws. So these guys have semi-retractable claws, um, which unlike house cat claws, right, they can go all the way in um, and, you know, retract. Um, cheetahs can't really retract all the way and that's to help them when they're running um, almost act as cleats. So, you know, athletes have cleats to give them more traction in the ground. Cheetahs have their claws out um, to kind of give them more traction in the ground as well. So it really helps when they're um, sustaining those top speeds. And their spine and their hips are really cool and they work together. Their spine is almost like um, a spring. Um, so when they're running, they're going to compress their spine and kind of shoot off like a, like a slingshot almost. Um, and their hips kind of have the ability to swivel. And then last but not least, their tail acts as a rudder um, to help them turn on a dime. So these guys are really successful um, in catching their prey. In our cheetah habitat, we have two brothers, Beanie and Buju. Um, they're kind of hard to tell apart, um, but the best way we can tell them apart is Beanie has a white tip on the end of his tail and Buju does not. He has a darker tail. Um, they came from the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, they are eight years old um, and it's very typical for brothers um, to stay together in cheetah, cheetah groups. Um, once cheetahs leave their mom in the wild, they'll, they'll usually form a sibling coalition, it's called, and um, they'll kind of hunt together and stay together their whole lives. If there's any females in that sibling group, um, they will go off on their own and create their own territory. Um, but brothers, it's very common that they stay together. Um, their lifespan in zoos is about 20 years. In the wild is a little bit less. It's about um, 10 to 12 years. Now you'll notice in their habitat, we do have a small climbing structure for Beanie and Buju. Um, and they, you can see them um, climb on that occasionally. And their semi-retractable claws do help them get up that. Um, and it's really common for cheetahs in the wild to kind of pick the tallest area kind of in the savanna, the open plains, maybe not in a tree, um, but they will try to pick a, a tall area so they can kind of survey the land and see where their prey is um, and even keep a lookout for predators. Now cheetahs are considered vulnerable on the endangered species list. Um, their numbers are declining. They've actually become extinct from 13 countries in Africa um, and their home range has declined about 89%, um, which is not really good. Now these are um, African cheetahs. Um, there is one subspecies um, of Asiatic cheetah um, and they used to found, be found all throughout Asia um, and now they are restricted just to Iran um, and there's very few left. Uh, I believe about 50 left in the wild. So conservation efforts for those guys um, are really strong. Um, we want to make sure we you know conserve those guys um, and in fact 
in 2014, the Iranian national soccer team had the Asiatic Cheetah as their World Cup jersey. So that's pretty cool. It shows that they're very dedicated um, to conservation, especially for those endangered cats. You'll notice on our cheetahs, Beanie and Buju, they have beautiful spots. Um, and that's really to help camouflage them, um, to sneak up on their prey, and to also avoid um, any fights with predators. Again, they're really, you know, a more flighty um, big cat. They'd rather avoid any predator conflicts. Um, so their camouflage and spots are really helpful for that. And their spots are always different. Um, no two cheetahs are the same. Um, their spots are like fingerprints. Um, so it's really cool and a little different from the rosettes that you learned about on our mirror leopard. Um, the spots are kind of just solid spots, unlike rosettes, which kind of look like a rose pattern. Um, and that's why they get their name rosette. Last but not least, I uh, haven't talked about their tear marks yet. Um, so cheetahs are known for two things, right? Their top speeds of 70 miles per hour and those tear marks. Um, and those tear marks are really um, important. Scientists think that they help with um, deflecting sun glare, just like we see our athletes and football players put, put the black marks on their face. Um, it's to help with sun glare. And that's really important because when cheetahs are going after their prey, um, like in Paula and Gazelle, um, they're going to be hunting during the day, they're diurnal. Um, so when they are running at those top speeds, they have to make sure that nothing distracts them, not even the sun. So those um, tear marks are a really cool adaptation that kind of puts together their whole persona of being an athlete, a runner, and a great hunter. Cheetah boys! Here, cheetah boys! So our challenge for you today is to see how fast you can run. Show us how you run like a cheetah. Have a race with one of your friends, get outside, go for a jog, but we want you to run like a cheetah. And don't forget to hashtag us at CMC Zoo School.